What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use Curvaloft to create some architecturally curving walls, but also we're going to give it a little bit of up and down interest with some other extensions as well. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create some walls that are kind of like the walls on this International Museum, which I believe is down in Mexico. They're not going to be exactly the same, but they'll give you the give you an idea of how you can create things like this that are a little bit more complex than just uh, than just taking a profile and extruding it up. Um, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon, by the way, for voting on this extension tutorial. So what I want to do is I want to start by just drawing the profile of a couple of the curves. And we're going to keep this fairly simple. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the arc tool and we're just going to draw a curve. And we're just going to assume it's going to be something like this. And what I want to do is I want to pay attention to the number of segments in this curve. In this case, I'm going to bump it up to 24. That's just going to affect the geometry that's created by Curvaloft. So now I need to create the top of the wall. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the Move tool in Copy Mode to copy this up right here. So I've created a copy, so now I have these two edges. And so what we could do right now is we could come in here and we could use Curvaloft in order to create a face, right? But that's going to give us a pretty boring face. What it's going to do is it's just going to create a face along these two edges. Um, so we don't want to do that yet. What we want to do is we want to mess around with this a little bit more. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this out this way and then also this way. And so what that's done is that's maintained the same arc that we had in here before with 24 segments. Both of these have 24 segments, which means Curvaloft isn't going to have any issues creating a face in here. And we've, we've moved it out so that we've got a little bit of extra movement in here. So now what we want to do is we want to create a face. And we'll create a more complex one in a minute. But for now, let's start with this one. And we're going to use the extension Curvaloft from Fredo 6 in order to do that. So what I can do is I can select these edges right here, activate Loft by Spline, and what that's going to do is that's going to generate a wall in here or a face in here using the edges that we have inside of our um, using the edges along our two arcs. And so if I was to click in here right here, that's going to create this face. And so that's created a fairly simple object in here, right? But it does have that kind of like upward and outward movement. And then let's say that we were happy with this wall. Um, so we've got this wall right here and we're happy with the face it created, but it doesn't have any thickness associated with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to use the extension joint push pull. By the way, I will link to all of these in the notes down below and we're just going to activate it. And we're just going to use this to give our wall some thickness. So all I have to do in order to do that is just type in the thickness of the wall that I want. So in this case, we're going to say that this is going to have a thickness of eight inches just like this. So now if I click in here, what that's done is that's generated a wall that follows my curve. Notice how you're getting some Z fighting in here. That's because it generated this new geometry as a group. And so if I was to double click inside of here, the reason we're getting that Z fighting is because it does have the original face in here as well as the new face that was created as a group. So what that's done is that's basically just put geometry on top of geometry, which is why you're getting that flashing. You could either come in here and hide your original face or you could delete it in order to get rid of that. But what that did is that allowed us to create this first wall right here. Well, now what we want to do is we want to create a more complex wall. So for example, we want to create a wall over here that has some up and down in addition to some curving. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do the same kind of thing where we're going to add an arc. So I'm just going to draw an arc over here. And we'll go ahead and set this so that it curves around a little bit. Maybe I'll give it another arc over here. So something like this. And what I want is I want to make sure. And so I've got these three segments in here just like this. Well, in SketchUp 2021, you can merge all of those together just by selecting them, right clicking and clicking weld edges. So that's going to generate this as a curve rather than just three sets of individual geometry. But now what I want to do 
is I want to make a copy of this using the move tool again. So we're doing the same thing we did before, but this time we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna scale this out a little bit like this. And you can kind of play around with this depending on how you want the top of your wall to work. But the other thing that we're gonna want in this situation is we also want this to have some ups and downs in here. And so what we can do is we can use sandbox tools, which is built into SketchUp, you just have to enable it, in order to add some up and down to this curve. So the way that we can do that is we're gonna activate the, the smooth tool right here. And then we're just going to move our mouse over a point, single click, and move this point up and down. And notice how you're getting a smooth curve because this is kind of like falling off along the edge right here, but it's basically just taking the vertices in this wall and it's just moving them up and down a little bit. So now what we've got is we've got a wall that's flat on the bottom and we've got some up and down over here. And so if we select this, notice this still has 36 edges right here and this has 36 edges right here. So the interpolation in here is still gonna be fine when we create this face. And so then we can just run the whole thing again and just activate loft by spline right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate that face along these edges. And so when we do that, and we generate that face, now we've got that curving face in here that we were looking for, but it's also got that up and down. And then from there, we can just do the same thing with joint push pull, where we can push pull it in or out, like this. And in this case, we're gonna give this a thickness of eight inches as well. So I'm just gonna type in a value of eight, and then we'll click in order to create this. And then you can just hide that extra wall if that's still in here. And so that gives you this nice wall, just like this. And so just real quick, and we don't have to do too much with this right now, but let's say that you wanted to create something other than a solid wall, right? So let's say that we were to take these edges, let's make a copy, over here. So one other thing that you could do if you wanted to is when you run curve aloft, let's say that you wanted to create maybe like a glass face that follows along with this. Um, so that would need some different uh, like vertical pickets or supports or something like that. So what we could do is we could run curve aloft again, but this time notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's creating all of this geometry, right? These straight edges and then these subdivisions right here. Well, if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could generate just the edges by clicking on these two options right here. So notice how what that's doing is that's just giving you like a wireframe of that face. And notice you can control the number of segments that are in here by changing this option right here. So the verticals are set by the number of segments that are in here, because it's kind of interpolating where the edges would go. But these horizontals, you can set the division in here to as many segments as you want. And so then we could just take this and we could just create it. And what that's done, and I'll move this off to the side right here, is that's created a mesh that we could then use as a path. And so you might use an extension like lines to tubes, for example in order to create tubes along each one of these edges in order to simulate some kind of a framing or something like that. Um, profile Builder would also work in this case. It would give you a little more control over the profiles that are created. But then you've got these tubes that are created and all you'd have to do is just run curve aloft again, like this. Generate the face and apply like a glazing material to it and then just move it over so that it aligns with your tubes. And that would allow you to create this kind of like curtain wall look in your models as well. So I will link to some other curve loft tutorials on this page. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters for voting on this extension, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.